finally returning to our Reaper Dungeon Dweller series. We need a wizard in our party, and this guy's looking pretty classic. This project, well, there were some issues. I'll get into those later in the video, but to start out with, since the last figure that we did, I think was the Ranger, uh, was a little drab in colors because we were going more nature, I decided to make this one very bright. So we're gonna go with a really bright blue with a lot of high contrast. I don't have a whole lot to add over what you're seeing on video here, so I don't have a whole bunch to say. We'll say I'm trying a little bit something different with the editing here. A lot of the clips are going to be showing you the beginning stages of layering of the paint, and then it'll end with the clip of the same color towards the end of the layering process, so you can see the difference between the two. For the cloak, we're going with some royal purple because, again, wanted really bright colors on this wizard. And the Vallejo model color royal purple is a little bit transparent, so we have to put that over an undercoat. I decided to go with violet in this case. Also decided to add uh, just a little bit of texture, not as much as, say, with the Dwarf King where we're painting a fur cloak, but I just wanted to do a little bit of horizontal texture to the robes just to make them a little bit more interesting, but 
it's not as strong as it was uh, to recreate a fur texture so the paint's a bit more thin in this case so it's not as obvious. To make the robes stand out a bit more, I decided to go with brown for the gloves, boots, and various accoutrements. And I'm just going to do a quick kind of color recipe on the small areas. They don't take a lot of highlighting or shading steps. All the areas were undercoated with Vallejo Camo Black Brown. Did all that at once to save time. And then just picked out different colors to use for the base coats and the highlights for the various areas where I wanted a few different shades of brown.
I'm still trying to recreate that uh, dirty white hair look that uh, I'm picturing in my head that we tried. Again, I think that was on the Dwarf King, now that I think about it. So going with a yellow undercoat here and then working our way up towards an off-white color for the beard. So it looks like kind of a dirty white or maybe once it was blonde, but it's mostly gone white at this point. So here's where things kind of get screwed up. Uh, I kept redoing the freehand work on our wizard here because I wasn't happy with it and I couldn't find something that matched the freehand that I did on the robes. And I don't know where the footage went. I don't know if I forgot to record it or I lost it. But we did a nice kind of zigzag pattern on the bottom of the robe, which I was happy with. However, I couldn't think of anything that really matched that pattern that I could use on other parts of the wizard. For the mantle, I decided to kind of quarter it off and then just add little geometric lines to it, but it, it didn't feel in the same kind of you know, genre as the zigzag pattern I did on the robe, so I had to scrap that. After playing around with a few different ideas for the cloak, I eventually decided to add some trim with some dark purple and then section that off with white. And I decided to put the uh, white in as dots first and then do a line over it just to give it a bit more of an interesting look. And then going back to the mantle, I decided to try to repaint that using that same shade of purple and add those little dots around the sides. And you know, in hindsight, I probably should have kept it this but I kept repainting and trying different things until I could find something that at least semi made me happy. After repainting sections so many times, I got frankly sick of this miniature, decided to try to continue that up down zigzag pattern on the robe and try to bring that around on the cloak. So just adding a V kind of shape on the top and then another one on the bottom, you'll see at the very end and using the same colors that we used on the robes. So magic blue and uh, stormy blue, I think is what we started with there. And this is what we ended up with in the end. Sorry this video is not as complete as I usually like to do, but I just got really frustrated trying to just decide on what type of freehand would look good and thematic for this wizard. And in the end, just repainting it over and over, I forgot to record some parts, so sorry. I do like the robes. Uh, the cloak came out semi-decently, and that mantle is really bugging me. Again, I just couldn't figure out what to do thematically on it uh, that would work with the rest of the miniature, and I'm still not happy with it, but I finally just had to stop because after a half dozen tries, you know, at some point you just gotta move on to something else which is what we'll do in this case. We are not done with our Reaper Adventure Party series. We've got one or two left to do, and then we'll call it quits for this adventuring party. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Well, one thing's for sure, gentlemen. The U.S. of A still makes the best damn samples on the market, and I mean nobody is going to change that. But